Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show. One more time, your best friend in astronomy, telescopes, and science. So, I wanted to show you this guy. This is a five inch refractor, and as you can see, it is brand new. Uh, I just took it out of the box, but I didn't want to take out the wrapping, but I just noticed you really can't see it if I leave it on. Um, so I'm gonna take it off, but you can see it's brand new and actually it's beautiful outside. I'm gonna take you guys outside as well. Okay guys, I am back. I also lowered it uh, a good like eight, nine inches. So as you probably saw in there, it was a lot taller, uh, but it doesn't need to be. But anyway, I don't want people to see it over the fence what I got and then they come visit me at night, you know what I mean, and uh, borrow it. First, what is this? Okay, it's called Max Vision. Actually, look really, really close. The O, that looks like a telescope looking towards us. Okay, that's kind of neat. I thought it was maybe the paint was missing right here, but if you look, it's a, a telescope looking this way. Okay, so let me explain what this is. I am sure you guys have heard of Mead and Explore Scientific. It's made out of JOC, uh, the factory. Now, this is, again, it's a different name brand. Don't worry about the name brand. Every single telescope out there is made from the same couple factories and everybody stamps their name on it, regardless if you're talking about Orion, Skywatcher, Mead, Celestron. Uh, but JLC makes Mead, it makes Explore Scientific, and this one's called Max Vision. It's the same thing. Now, in North America, Explore Scientific has the licensing agreement to call their name Explore Scientific. In Asia, though, the agreement or the licensing agreement is Max Vision. So it's the same thing. I mean, you can really tell if you look at the handle, it looks exactly like the Explore Scientific. The oversized uh, do cap there. Uh, this is a five inch. Now, as you, as you guys know, I have always said I think the five inch is the perfect size for many people. Um, comes with a nice set of rings, Vixen bar, of course, the handrail, which is not common on most telescopes. It is 1200 millimeter focal length, giving it a focal ratio of 9.4. You got your shoe on here, uh, nice glossy white. And let's see if we can look at that lens. As you can see, a nice purple. And as you can see by those uh, set screws, it is columnable. So if you ever need to, a push-pull, uh, but not, most refractors hold their collimation almost 99% of the time, maybe 100% of the time. But if you ever do need, you have the screws for that. This is not your regular Skywatcher focuser that comes with the basic refractors it's fully rotatable which is only the better refractors have that it is notched so if you're doing imaging or if you want to know exactly where your eyepiece or your focus needs to be then you can tighten it down and then you're exactly on focus now it is a single speed focuser uh, this is a two and a half uh, I believe it's called a hex uh, focuser. And as you can see underneath, let me see if I can, nice brass teeth, which is new. Here's your locking nut here. And you get the inch and a quarter, two inch uh, adapter in there. So you can put a two inch diagonal if you like. So this is not your regular refractor. This is usually you have to upgrade to that. So normally, I would say you probably do not need to upgrade this, most likely. Maybe only the die-hard imagers might want a double speed, but really this is a very nice focuser. I'm gonna show you with the average focuser that comes with a five inch, four inch, six inch Acromat. Okay guys, this is a four inch F5 refracting telescope. It's a doublet Acromat. Nothing super fancy, it's not ED, it's not apochromatic or anything like that. But, you know, all the companies make this type of refractor in 80 millimeter, 
100 millimeter, 120, six inch, and all that type of thing. But let's just take a look at the focuser on these regular ones. As you can see, it's just your stock two inch uh, die cast focuser, which I guess is fine. It has just your plastic knobs here. And it's your basic focuser type of thing. Most people are gonna upgrade from this. Uh, now, let me show you the teeth. It's fine, it's your basic focuser, two inch focuser, that's come with these refractors, almost all refractors if it's a two inch. Remember, if it's a inch and a quarter, it's gonna be even worse, it's gonna be a plastic focuser. But it's, you know, that's been coming with this, uh, these type of refractors for over 20, 25 years. So I would say this focuser, it's just a much better quality. It's something that you would normally upgrade to, and if it came with it, unless you're, again, a serious imager, I don't think you're gonna to need to upgrade it at, at all. Okay, on my channel, I always say the five inch is probably the perfect for most people in this hobby. And the reason is, you can see how big and long it is. First of all, 1200 millimeter focal length, you don't always see that on a five inch Acromat. Um, you know, it's normally maybe a thousand millimeters, sometimes 800 millimeters or even less. Now being this long, it's going to give you razor sharp images of the sun, moon and planets, double stars. It's going to just be nice and tight. An ED in this size, you're probably looking at probably a minimum 24, 2500 at least. But uh, I think you're going to be very happy with a long format uh, Acromat refractor. Now, mind you, if you put a two inch uh, diagonal on there and then a two inch eyepiece, you can get some decent wide field views on anything. So if you do need to go wide, that's all you have to do. You have the capability. It's not like this is F15 or F20 and it's just gonna be narrow views. So if you guys are looking for a five inch refractor and take into consideration a five inch refractor is equivalent to like a six and a half inch reflecting telescope, uh, that type of thing. Even deep sky stuff, you're gonna begin to resolve uh, deep sky stuff like uh, globular clusters, uh, nebulas, galaxies, um, and open clusters fairly well. Uh, again, this will probably equal a six and a half inch reflecting telescope, but you don't have to collimate this guy. It's razor sharp and uh, you have best of both worlds. And because it's an Acromat, you're not talking about thousands of dollars. So you got a great package here for the person that is looking for something like this. Don't wait long. This is the only one I got. This is the only one I'm gonna get. I will not get another one. That is it, okay? Okay guys, uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the channel. Cheers. If you, if you guys know anybody getting into astronomy, share my YouTube channel link, share my uh, Facebook, uh, Joe Jaguar City Astronomer on Facebook, and why not you, why not me? Max Vision also makes different size refractors from, you know, the 80 millimeter, maybe even smaller, uh, I think all the way to the six inch refractor. Uh, they make reflecting telescopes, Dobsonians, Dobson, however you want to call it, and most things. So I think they're a good name brand. I don't think you guys have to worry if you've never heard of Max Vision. Again, it's fine. I think, again, every company out there um, gets it from the same factory. Then what they do is they color it, whatever color they want. Every company has their own color. They stamp their name, but it's the same optics. Don't worry about it. It's a good quality telescope. It is, I would say, when you're com when you're comparing Acromats, uh, this guy, it's actually not your standard Acromat. It's kind of like your mid-level. But it is, I would say, above the average uh, type of thing that's sold out there by the other companies anyway. With a better focuser, you got the handle, the fit and finish looks good. Um, I give it uh, the exact same. If you if you like Explore Scientific and need, you'll like this one. Not a problem. The moon is out tonight. Maybe what I should do, no promises, but I'll see if I can take some quick shots or video of the moon through this guy. Okay, so here's the moon. I'm on a EQ5 
manual tripod, no slow motion controls, slow, sorry, no uh, drive system at all. These right over here, I don't know if you can see that half circle, that's the real movement. That right there is like a mountain range. Right there, that's like mountain range. It's gonna come into view in a second. I'm just, and look how big that crater is. Okay, that's the real movement of the earth right there. Remember, this is just a cell phone, nothing fancy. You can see, you can see hundreds of those craters. Let me see if I can blow it up. fast the moon is moving when you're up this close now it comes a huge crater right here here comes that mountain range coming into view again because I don't have a drive that's the movement there I can even get way closer than that touching it now that's why it's shaking I believe there's a valley uh, let me see if I can find it let's see if it's coming into view very soon right up here Okay, now I know where that valley is. It's coming in the next, there it is. Can you see that right there? Again, I just touched it, so. Look how huge that crater is. That could probably swallow half a city right there. Okay guys, hopefully you like these close-up shots of the moon. Just wanted to add, just in case you guys are probably wondering, I was probably at extreme high power. I was using a Mead 24 and a half super wide angle eyepiece, and it comes out to uh, 1200 millimeters divided by 24 and a half is 48.9, 49 power, that's it. I wasn't at no extreme. You should be able to go, I mean, as you, as you saw, when I was blowing it up, I was blowing it up on the screen. However, as far as the power was concerned, when I wasn't blowing it up, that was only 49 power. You can go on that sucker, you know, all the way to 250 power type of thing and really zoom in. Just thought I'd mention it. I was not extreme power there. So imagine what you're going to see if you actually push the power to 200.